Hi and welcome to No Second Season. I've got quite a different one here for you today and this one is all about Microsoft Access. I've been a dabbler in databases for about 25 to 30 years now. I'm not a developer, I'm a dabbler and I do small sections of code and it's not pretty, it probably doesn't conform to what it should do if you're a proper developer, but I don't care as long as it works for what I need. It doesn't matter where you go, particularly in motorsport, when I was in motorsport anyway, um, everywhere you went, they just didn't have software systems to do what you needed to do accurately and in a closed loop manner. So I always ended up devising a system, designing some supporting databases and doing the work. Hence, working double the hours. Luckily, in the job I'm in now, I just work in a garage. I don't have to do those long hours and I'm very glad about that. I've already got one database running at the garage I'm working at, but I wanted to extend that so that the mechanic could clear off the tasks on a service he was doing on a tablet or laptop. And that's what I'm working on now. Because I wanted the mechanic's name to go against each task, I needed to know who was logged in. And that is something I scoured YouTube and the internet for a very simple way in access of logging a user in. And I couldn't find anything worth having, um, so I've had to develop it myself. And that's what this video is all about, um, creating a logged in user for Microsoft Access. Without further ado, let's have a look at the database. So let's open that database. As you can see, when it opens, it asks for a login. There's some basic validation here. If you put the wrong username in, the wrong password in, it'll tell you. Like such. So I'll log in and this screen opens. So I'll talk you through the table structure I've got that has helped me achieve this known logged in user. So first of all, I've got user types. I've got admin and user, very basic. Then another table with the users, with their full name, their username, their password, and the user type. As you can see, I've got you two users and an admin. I've just logged in as admin, and that has opened this administrator action screen. If I log in as normal users, it will open up to their specific menu. The login status is it records when you logged in, date and time, and when you logged out, date and time. And when a user logs in, it will open on a very similar screen to this. And they've only got one button at the moment because I'm just developing this database and it will be the update job sheet screen. So we click on that, ask for the job number. So we'll enter that. And it brings up the service sheet for this job number, this registration, the car, and who's logged in and who's looking at it. We have a column here, which are all unique tasks. Each task belongs to a group. The groups are shown in the second column. The third column is just some notes for the mechanic. And then we have the buttons that are relevant to the mechanic. On this screen, the technician can end a job, puts their name, date and timestamp. Um, so they can just do a few jobs. Uh, you can also clear them one at a time or they can complete a group of jobs. So on hoist checks are selected here, complete group tasks and it will complete all tasks that are in the on hoist checks group. 
And likewise, you can clear that group. We can clear all. So that clears all tasks. So I've got what I wanted, name, date and timestamp. And I'll show you now how I've done that. A quick recap, the table structure to make this work, I've got user types, users, and login status. And those three are all used um, to know who is logged in on this machine at this moment. So first of all, let's go into the login form. We're going to the design of that. So that's here. So we've got a username goes in here. I've called that text user txt username. And the pin goes in here, that's txt password. And then when they click this button on the event. So I'm not able to show you it all here because I've got some really long SQL code in here and I can't for the life of me split it up. I've tried and tried. Um, it just won't split into different lines or I can't do it. And it's a really long one. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have a website. It's nosecondseason.com. I'll put a blog post on there and I'll post all of my code onto that. So if you go to my blog, nosecondseason.com, I'll put it on the screen. I'll do a blog with all this information in it. I'll just quickly run through what I've got here. So I'm just doing a bit of validation. Is there a username? Is there a password? Does the password and username match what is in the user's um, table? And then it's going to store the user type in user type ID. And then it's going to store um, in a public variable, the username. That's just the initials. And then it's also going to store the same thing in a temporary variable. I can't remember why I had to do two, a public and a temp, but I did. And if it's an administrator, user type, then we will do all of this which is um, a bit of declaring databases and tables, and that serves for both users and admins. Um, but if it's an admin, we're going to add the uh, username and the date and timestamp to the logins table. And then we're gonna update the logins table with the full username. And then we're going to close the login form, that first little form with username and password. And we're going to open the administrator's first screen, which is the one I showed you before. Otherwise, if it's a uh, user type user, um, it's going to again update the tab logins table. It's going to add their name it's going to close the login form and it's going to open the mechanics first screen. And that's it. So when logging out, um, it's just running basically looking who's logged in in the tab logins table. And it's running again some very long SQL code uh, to update the date and timestamp against their name in the tab logins table to log them out. Just as a quick recap, I'll just talk you through what it's doing when. So if I log in, in the normal login screen, it does a bit of validation. When I press this button, it do a bit of validation, um, but it will also write the username that's here, and a date and timestamp into the logins table. So we'll log that in. We'll look in the login, what I'm calling login status, but it's named logins. And you can see AH logged in at that time and date. And the logout time is set to 3001 because I haven't logged out yet. If I log out, 
It will change that to a date and time stamp of now, but I shan't do it. So that's all that's doing. Now, when I'm calling, let's put a job number in there. So when I'm pressing this, basically I'm entering that public variable and the date and time stamp, and that's all it's doing. It's all really simple. Now, one thing to bear in mind is, I don't know if this is going to work with multiple users. I've only got one user for it, so I don't need to have multiple users. Um, so bear that in mind. I think that's all I can tell you about this little Microsoft Access project. A bit of VBA with a bit of SQL thrown in. Um, I'm hoping it will be okay to be networked. I'll have to figure out a way of testing that at some point. I have no method at the moment, um, but fingers crossed on that. Don't forget to head over to my website, nosecondseason.com. If you'd like to see more about it, I'll put a bit more detail on there, as well as the facility to copy and paste or print out, whatever you prefer. And uh, I will close this video here. So from me, for now, it's over and out.